Hey guys, in this video I'm going to go over my IKEA LAC table enclosure for the Perusa i3 MK3S Plus. I'm going to show you what it takes to get it set up like this. Okay, if you're unfamiliar with this particular type of enclosure, this is a, a DIY enclosure. It is made from IKEA's LAC tables. L-A-C-K is the model, the LAC table. They're a 22 by 22 inch table. And uh, this particular style that I'm using has three of them. This is my own kind of um, take on everyone else's style. So I have three of them and what I did was each table comes with one top piece and four legs and four double-sided screws. When I say double-sided screws, I mean there is no head on them. They are threaded both directions. So that way you s normally what you would do is screw the foot um, into the bottom of the table and then it's done. So what I did is I took those screws, the original Ikea screws, and actually it's kind of hard to tell. See, it will just be a spot over here and connected the two legs right here together. So that way I got a, a lot more height out of that um, table instead of just the short amount of distance it was. And I didn't want to have to put, you know, six or eight inch plastic spacers in there. I didn't think it was going to look as aesthetically nice. So additionally to that, if you go on to Thingiverse, you can find the LAC IKEA enclosure setup where it gives you the STL files for the handles, the hinges, the magnet mounts, and um, what I did was I used all of that same hardware, but I just printed an extra set of handles and an extra set of magnet mounts so that I could have them on both the top and bottom. So I did want my enclosure to close completely. So covering that, all of those plastic pieces in here are available on Thingiverse's LAC enclosure build. I'm not sure exactly who does it. It may be one of the guys from Prusa, um, but there, it's a good build. The, the parts are pretty quality. I've had no problems with actually assembling everything together. The other great thing about this build is the whole top portion can actually be separated right here. There's nothing connecting this top. So if I needed to expose it to expose the printer to get space all the way around the printer, this whole top piece will actually lift off. All the plexiglass stays inside and there's no problems whatsoever. So to elevate the printer, because I didn't have anything else I was putting it on, that's where the third table comes into play. So what I did is I actually screwed the legs into the bottom of the table on top of it where the printer is actually sitting right here. And I had the extra, we'll call it top piece of the table. And so what I did was I put the nice black side facing up so it would be aesthetically pleasing. And I used some uh, about two and a half inch screws and drilled through the bottom up. And the reason I did this, not only to give myself a nice platform to set things down on the bottom, but also because I wanted to create more stability between those legs. So having more stability, we don't want that printer. It's gonna be rocking around. Notice it's not moving very much. You can see this plexiglass will move fairly easily with some movement and uh, there's not a, the, the printer is not creating a lot of movement itself. The plexiglass, this is actually acrylic, not plexiglass, but it is three millimeters or eighth inch is the, the size you can use for this particular lac enclosure kit. That's what they sized it for. Now, if you're going to use the LAC enclosure from Thingiverse, um, their STL files and everything, they have measurements for the plexiglass on there. That's not going to work because their enclosure is not double stacked tall. So you're not going to, obviously, you're not going to have the same plexiglass measurements. That is something that I would highly suggest you do on your own after you've fully assembled the enclosure itself. And the reason I say that is because there's going to be small tolerances of where you set some of the plastic components that you're going to build to mount the hinges and all that fun stuff. So if you don't have perfect alignment on it, you may have some problems if you already have pre-cut uh, plexiglass or acrylic. So that's going to be something that you're going to want to do after you get the whole 
enclosure assembled. And it's gonna seem a little flimsy at first, but when you actually set the plexiglass in there, it's gonna give it a little bit more rigidity from the corners right there actually mounting in. What I did was I used some super glue to uh, super glue both the magnets inside of the uh, tabs to open the doors and then I glued, super glued the tabs to the glass. Same thing over here on the hinge, Just a very small amount was all it needed. It doesn't take very much on that stuff. So, All right guys, I hope this uh, helps you and uh, gives you some ideas to maybe build something a little bit better. Oh, there's one more thing I actually built on here is uh, an additional plate holder down here. So if you have the textured plates, that's uh, something that just makes it super convenient to just have the plates down there out of the way. I didn't want to have an extra stand inside the enclosure because I've seen that some people have the extra plates just standing up off to the side. I like it. It's pretty discreet right there. You can't even tell that it's there and um, it's been good. So the door is closed nice and easily. No problems there all nice and smooth so currently I'm still using the factory filament holder from Prusa I do plan on doing some sort of a relocation to the under the top portion of the enclosure so that way it's still enclosed and uh, I'm gonna have as many reels as I can on there because I do wanna create some extra weight on the enclosure, enclosure just to make it more stable itself. Having any kind of extra weight in there is really gonna help it. So if I can get, you know, uh, three more spools up there on top of the two that are already sitting inside of there and have five spools sitting in there, it's really gonna make the difference on how heavy the enclosure itself is and weighing the, the, the printer down from creating movement that's gonna cause the enclosure to move. Electrical. So right now for the power of the electrical, it actually makes its way. There is a hole cut out in one of the, um, we'll call them uh, mounting points for the lac enclosure. So you can actually run your cable through there. And like I said before, if you wanted to pull the top of the enclosure off, you can do that and you don't have to worry about any cables hanging or dangling down. Um, the other thing is lights. Now, my lights are set up with my Alexa. She has uh, full control over them. They are red, blue, green, and white. I have them going over diagonal and from the center to the outside pillars in the front and uh, gives a reflection off the plexiglass right there, or the acrylic, sorry. And then I also have my controller back here, separate controller for it. Um, it has its own power supply going to it. The reason I did that is because I didn't want to run it off the printer itself. Prusa does have a spot where you can pull 24 volts off and do your supply for the, um, the LED lighting off of there. However, I'm actually in the process of moving right now, which is why this is all sitting in my living room. So as soon as I get moved, I'm going to have a builder room. This is going to go in the builder room and I want to be able to have the lights on when the printer's not running as well because it's a nice printer and I spent some money on it and I want to make sure I'm displaying it in the, the beautiful case that I just finished building. So that's the reason I did that. It's set up to Alexa. Alexa, printer lights red. So she'll change the color red. She can do any of the colors. She can dim the lighting if it's too bright, all that fun stuff. Alexa, printer lights blue. There is other options out there besides just running the, the LED lighting off of the top and uh, connecting it to the printer itself. So just uh, be considered or consider all the other options out there when you're doing your builds and uh, let me know if you guys have any cool little things that you've done with your enclosures or maybe things you've seen, some sort of tool holders. That's the next thing I think I'm gonna do is a, a couple little drawers maybe down under the bottom so that way I have some organization under there as well. 
All right, guys, hope you guys liked the video and uh, feel free to comment if you have any questions. If they're fairly relative to when the video's been posted, I'll be able to answer them with great detail right away. But if you comment in like four or five years, there's probably a good chance I'm not gonna have remembered all the details that went into this. So, all right, guys, enjoy, good luck.